Hello, today we're going to be going over our Salem 26 D bud and we are going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. You got your one switch here, it's going to be for your light, so if you had to hook up at night. But then the other one is how you raise and lower. It's how we level front to back, but this is also how we get off the tow vehicle. I do like to recommend before unhooking from the tow vehicle that you are level from side to side first. Uh, you can uh, by stick on levels and stick on the front and on the side, or you can use a carpenter's level right inside the doorway. But you might have to put blocks down and use the tow vehicle to roll onto those blocks. It just makes it a lot easier. Then you would unhook, level front to back using this guy. Then you're going to lower your stabilizer jacks located on each corner of the camper. It is a three quarter and is actually a socket that will go on a drill. And then you have the uh, strong arms to help lock that into place so it kind of eliminates a lot of that shaking uh, in the coach. You do also have the manual crank option there so if something happens to the motor you still have a way to operate the jack. And then next we're going to have our two 30 pound tanks. These guys have both been filled minus what was used to test the propane system with. And right now this guy here is reading red showing that it does not have any propane flow. When we go to turn this guy on it will flip the green. Give it just a second there, it should flip the green. There it goes. Sends in the propane flow. This guy here tells you what tank you are using. Nice thing about this regulator is it's actually designed to where if you have both tanks on, once the one tank has been emptied, it will start drawing from the other tank. But you're not gonna know that that tank is empty unless you come out here and look at this guy. And it will tell you red because it's trying to read that tank that is empty. Then all you would do is just swap it over to the other tank, unhook it, go get it refilled. Back behind here is where our battery is located, just a 24 series uh, deep cycle marine RV style battery. And it also does tell you to uh, what wires hook up for each. We got our cover here. And then over here on this side here is where your battery disconnect is located. So whenever you're hooked to shore power or you are <clears throat> towing the vehicle, you do want to make sure that this is in that on position. When you're storing the camper, you're just going to turn that key and pull it out and it disconnects the camper from the battery so nothing would potentially drain it. All right. This come around to the side. Pretty much you got your pass-through storage compartment. And most of your stuff is located on the other side. There is a small little panel there that's generally designed for if you decide to get solar panels. It's got the wiring there. All right, so next we're gonna basically go towards the back of the coach. Back here is where we're going to have our sewer hookup. Basically, you're going to have your gray and your black. And you do have a secondary gray as well underneath here. Whenever you go to dump, you're always going to start with your black first. You want to make sure you hook up your sewer hose. It'll have a clear elbow. It goes into the ground. Then you're going to pull this valve to drain it. When you do so, that's when you're going to do your black tank flush. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. But once you're done doing all that, that's when you're going to close that guy off and then you'll open your grays. Pretty much you got the one gray that goes for the bathroom sink and shower. The other gray is just your kitchen sink. All right, right over here is going to be our black tank flush that I was just talking about. Do you recommend that you would want to have a pressure regulator on the spigot? From there, go buy yourself a black hose, black tank, black hose. It keeps it simple. And then you're going to hook up and turn that guy on. The reason why you want the check valve, the pressure regulators, is because on the back side of this is a plastic check valve that too strong a water pressure can cause damage. Once you're done doing your flush, uh, turn off the water, unhook it from the spigot first, and then unhook it from here. All right, just to backtrack real briefly, you got your 50 amp power cord that does come with the coach. You got your cable and satellite hookups. Uh, if you are using the campground cable, you do have to make sure you turn off the TV antenna booster and I will show you where that is located once we have stepped inside. And then our other guy over here is going to be our city water hookup. With this guy, once again, you're going to have a pressure regulator on the spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. From there, you're going to hook it up. You're going to be ready to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait till the water heater is filled with water to get water on the hot side. And it's actually located right here in this back corner. So back behind here, with this guy, you do have the electric option located down here at the bottom. 
Right now I do have that on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that guy off. Whenever you go to drain this guy, because we're done camping, you're gonna open this guy to relieve the pressure, and then you're gonna take this guy out down here. This is your anode rod. This guy starts out the size of a dime and will work itself down to the size of a coat hanger. You want to inspect that, because once it gets below a certain level, you want to replace it. This is a one and one sixteenth socket to remove that piece. This is also gas option, which is located on the inside. Does have the option for an observational backup camera. I always have a tendency to overlook these guys. Up here, you have the option for the aftermarket on the go ladder. It's a telescope, telescope style ladder. And it's got two hooks that'll hook onto that so you can get up there and inspect your roof. Uh, basically, you want to check the sealants, make sure over time that no air bubbles have occurred, uh, or over time it starts drying out and it'll start cracking. When that happens, you want to clean that area and then put new lap sealant down. You can usually do that about two to three times, and it is usually recommended that you want to completely re remove it and then reseal. We've got our spare tire as well. Uh, our bumper does hold your sewer hose. Uh, the only thing it does not hold is the clear oboe that comes with the sewer hose. I usually recommend getting yourself a little ice cream container. Uh, the plastic one, we're going to have a good time eating ice cream, but that elbow will fit in that ice cream container. Right here on this corner here, it's labeled as your low point drains. These guys are located right underneath. Basically, you're going to have, you know, your blue and your red. And then you basically use these when you're done camping or when you go to winterize. I always recommend when you're done camping, you would open these guys to relieve the pressure and then open your faucets or open one faucet. As you go home, the air is going to blow through the lines and push any of that excess water out so it won't become potentially stagnant or bad. When you go to winterize, you would open those lines, go through, open all the faucets, make sure you get all the water, you know, relieve all that pressure and then turn that pump on for just a few seconds or a minute or so. Uh, just to try to push any of the excess water out. And then from there, you would use your water pump to winterize the coach. And I'll show you that once we have stepped inside. We got our back door here, and I even labeled the key for you. I colored it silver and then wrote a B on it for the back door or bathroom. She probably locked our deadbolt. Cleaner likes to lock the deadbolts on me on these second doors. But basically, to the bathroom. Got a nice breeze coming out of there. We got our steps here. These guys are just a fold out, fold, and then fold. That's all there is with those guys, real nice and simple. As we go along, we got our outside speakers here. I'll show you guys uh, how to turn these guys on once we have stepped inside. You do have your 110 connection here, and then your hookup for the outside TV. Then I got our mount right here for it that we installed. And then we got our fresh water tank fill. This is pretty much gravity fed. You'll stick the hose in, let it fill. You do want to read the monitor panel inside for when it does read full, you do want to shut the water off. When you go to drain this guy, it is going to be located right down here behind the tire. There's a simple valve that you would pull right here and it's got a nice opening. So it's gonna dump that water out really quickly. As you see, I got a little bit of water in there at this time. We got our vent for the stove. Uh, you do always want to make sure that it's popped open when you go to use it, and then you will just close it uh, whenever you're traveling or not using it. Then we got the furnace. You ain't trying to block this guy, but you do want to make sure to maybe get the mud dauber screens to put over this. Helps keep the wasp and mud daubers out of there from creating nests that, become, that can create issues. You do have an outside quick connect spray port. Pretty much that piece will just go in and it twists the lock into place. I actually have that in our front storage compartment. We'll see that here in just a moment. <clears throat> Next, we got our tires. You do always want to make sure you check the lug nuts at 50, 100, and 200 miles. And that's what this sticker here says. Uh, I always like to recommend it doesn't hurt to check them. Uh, anytime you guys leave the campground, first place we usually stop is the gas station to refuel. Well, while you're refueling, you can check the lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. And then you always want to do keep the tires topped off to their max PSI level. I believe these guys were 65 PSI. Let's confirm that. Yep, 65 PSI. The green caps show that you have nitrogen in these guys. Uh, if you start to lose air, you can, or lose, you know, you gotta top them off. You can top them off with air. But if you ever go to an area that has a nitrogen station, you want them refilled with nitrogen, you have to let them know that you put air in them so they know to purge the tire. 
Next we got our little outside kitchen area here. We got our fridge and our freezer. And I've already got that guy on. It's nice and cold. A little mini fridge up, or freezer up top there. And then our griddle. So with the griddle, I do always recommend look on YouTube on how to season a black stone. You do want to season this before you use it. But basically from there, we're gonna have you look through here so you can see it a little easier. But basically you're gonna come down to this side here and you got your connection here. This valve on top right now is in the off position. You turn it like so, so it's in line so that the propane comes through to light the grill. And it also blocks this from being able to potentially pop off. When you're done, close that off, you're able to pull this to release. And then this guy can just kind of sit right here on that floor and it'll slide right in. They do have a lock here, so if for some reason it starts to go in, it'll stop so it wouldn't go in while the flame is on. And then that guy just basically sits right in the sill. And then you got the grease trap right there. This key here is going to be your 751. We'll come back to our steps in, in just a moment. Basically, just kind of come over here on this side. Here's that hose I was telling you about. Then you got your manual crank. This guy here is so that you're able to tighten those strong arms once you have set them in place. And then you got your three quarter socket right there that you put on your drill. And then you got your light right here on the side and it's just a center push button. And then this guy here is a dry erase surface. So you get your dry erase marker. You guys run out of something, you can write it down and then take a picture of it. If you guys generally have uh, like a camping lot that stays at or something like that. Uh, you can take a picture of that and then you know what you need to get for camp next time you come down. All right. So with our steps here, one thing that you do always have to note is this door does have to be all the way open when you go to operate these steps. Basically, it will lock in just like so. And then these guys here, so you're able to adjust the feet. If you need to, a lot of people have them all the way in that down position and then bring this out and set it down. The reason for that is because you do want this to be as flat with the threshold as possible. Too much of an elevation can cause both issues with the screen door and the entry door if we are not careful. Need to readjust that guy. All right, as we step inside, Right, to, right at our door is going to be the fire extinguisher. Then we got our GFCI outlet right here. So if some of the outlets are, they got a GFCI sticker on them, are not working, come and make sure this guy has not been tripped. And then we're going to have our control panel right here. Basically, it shows you your status of the battery. As you see, we still got a lot, little water in that fresh tank. Our black is empty, gray, and then galley, which is our kitchen sink. Got the water pump on. The water. This guy here is going to be your gas option for the water heater. Then you got your lights here. These are going to be for your awning lights. And then this one here is a little ambiance lights above the slide. We bring our slide room in and out. When you hear that sound, you're knowing when you want to stop. And then to bring our awning in and out. Camper here, so I do want to keep an eye on that. Make sure we don't get too close. All right, should be able to at least bring it out. Show you guys that much. Uh, when you do bring your awning out, basically there is a flat that would be horizontal with the uh, ground. But right here, you're able to actually pull down. And it tells you there to create a pitch. Pretty much, it's meant to be as a shade protectant. Uh, they do always recommend that if the camper is being unoccupied that your awning should be in. Uh, a strong gust of wind or a pop-up storm can cause damage to both the awning and the camper if you are not careful. And as you see, this guy is not the fastest guy in the world.
And then our other switch here is going to be for our ceiling lights. Just uh, press touch to turn them on and off. If you press and hold, you can actually dim the lights down. So if we're having a kid-free weekend, we're trying to have a nice little romantic evening, you can kind of dim the lights down. you got the fireplace for an ambiance. Uh, lay down the bare rug if you want to. And then uh, have a good evening. All right. I'm going to squeeze right over here and shut this door real quick. Try to keep some of that nice cool air in here. We're going to have our little closet area. It does have a push center button light. Then we got the TV here, customer supplied. Um, it is on a swivel and being close to the slide, you did have to install a strap for this guy. Basically though, you can always unhook that strap, you can always re-secure it down here so it just ain't hanging down. And then it kind of pivots. Generally though, anytime you get to a new area, you do have to scan for channels. Uh, you will make sure that TV antenna booster is on. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, and it does vary on TVs when you are scanning for channels. Let me see if I can try to... Nope, I don't think that's going to be... Uh... Broadcasting, you can go to auto programming. And then, let's see, push star to search the store channel. Nope, I don't think that is correct. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a newer TV for me to, and I didn't get to quite the chance to learn it earlier. I should have. The owner may have to read in his manual on how to pre-scan for channels. I do apologize for that. I don't get to mess with Samsung TVs that often, so <laughs> uh, that is completely new to me. I apologize. Uh, you're going to have this remote here. It's going to be for your radio. Uh, so Zone 1 will be the inside speakers here. And zone two is going to be your outside speakers. You can have them both on at the same time or one or the other. You are also able to uh, hook up to the back side of this if you're trying to do some surround sound features. Uh, you're able to kind of do that as well. You pop this little cover off, take out the screws, and you can hook your wires up, and they would feed right through here straight to the TV. All right, so, and then our other remote, it's going to be for the fireplace. Uh, basically, you got your power button. Right now, it's showing me F1, so it's going to basically just give me that ambiance look. Uh, you can change the color of your flames. You got red, blue, four transitions between all the colors, and then back to one. Change the color of the rocks as well. And then you got a timer setting from 30 minutes to nine hours. And then your thermostat button, basically you would have low, high, and then just that ambiance look. I had to comb through it quick because I do have both airs on. I ain't trying to trip any breakers. All right, so right down here is where our TV antenna booster is located. I was just talking about that outside. So if you guys are trying to scan for campground cable, you would have to turn this booster off just by simply pushing that button. And then you would scan for the campground cable channels. Once again, TVs vary by model. I'm trying to uh, get to the auto scan feature. And then the top one is for the satellite. <clears throat> All right, as we come into the bedroom, we have our uh, other customer supply TV here already hooked up, tested. All is good. We got our little closet area here. It does also have a light up top. 
tight squeezing in here. Uh, each closet side does have a 110 hookup and a little cubby space. Basically, it's designed for if you're using a CPAP machine uh, or if you're trying to hook up to charge your phone, but you do also have USB charging ports on each side. Uh, there is a little bit of storage there. You got some storage baskets and then to the tunnel box there underneath. You do got storage up above. It does have a single individual reader light underneath. And then this guy over here is going to be our fire exit window. So with this guy, this window is on a hinge. Basically, it will fling all the way open. But they, this tab's here is because they would say they want you to pull the screen out before you try to get out. I say if there's a fire, try to get out. I ain't trying to worry about a screen getting damaged. Uh, you got your light switch for the bedroom. And then your door here basically would unsnap slides and it's magnetic so it'll lock right in well hello why hello again <laughs> all right so the next we're going to have what they call the versa lounge uh there is going to be a attached video or a second usb drive yes, to demonstrate this entire in my, in my opinion of monstrosity uh but it is actually a very nice little feature there is storage underneath all the compartments there um, these two back windows are solid. You are able to open the side windows. And then each side does have the lights, but these are center button pushed. To turn them on or off. Then we're going to have our bunk area. The bunk area has USBs on each side. And light switch down below for the lower bunk. Up for our upper bunk. We got the uh, divider there to shut that off lift this up to be able to get access for easier storage or more storage I do believe the weight limit on these guys are about 225 uh, so try not to exceed that if possible you do have a hidden 110 outlet down below there the bathroom that we previously seen from our door side as we step in we're gonna have the toilet so basically whenever you go to use the toilet you're gonna lightly press on the pedestal so you can have water to do your business all the way down. It's going to flush. You do always want to try to leave some water inside that bowl so that way that seal doesn't get dry rotted or brittle because then the smell can start to come through. I also usually like to recommend if you take some nonstick cook spray, spray the bowl of the toilet. It helps everything slide down easier and makes an easier clean for the cleaner. Then we got our shower area here. This guy just slides open. So with this guy, you're going to have a reducer button on here. Pretty much, it reduces that flow of water. It doesn't usually completely stop the water. The reason why, though, is so you can try to get the most out of your hot water heater. Your water heater is only six gallons. The average American uses 38 gallons of just hot water when they take a shower. So you're just already outmatched right out the gate. And if you got long hair, you're really in trouble. Then we got the sink area, the GFCI protected outlet on this side so you got a little bungee here kind of helps keep that door secured and that guy opens and this guy only opens so far uh, due to um, this will hit the back side of this and too much pressure can actually damage these oh and then you do got your fan up above your switch there for that guy and then your handle to open All right, so next we're gonna have our thermostat. Basically with this guy, there's a lot of button pushing, but I'm gonna go ahead and comb through and we're gonna start at the beginning. So your little space bar looking guy, when you first press it, will light it up. And then from there, you got fan low and fan high. And that's just gonna be the fan on the air conditioner. Then you got cool high and cool low. And these two settings here, the air conditioner does not shut off. It'll just continuously run. And then you have cool low auto and cool high auto, and that's where it would shut on and off to your desired set temperature. Looks like we had it pretty nice and cold in here. And then your last option after this is heat, which is your furnace. It is propane only, and it comes through all the ducting on the floor, all the vents on the ceiling are for the air conditioner. All right, so then down below here is gonna be where our LP slash carbon monoxide detector is. It is recommended you wanna test this guy every nine to 14 days. 
And just by simply pushing this button, we're going to be performing that test. And went back to green. These guys have a life expectancy of seven to 10 years. I have seen these guys go bad before that. That's why you do want to periodically test it to make sure that it properly works. There are certain other things besides propane and carbon dioxide that can make this go off. Uh, cleaning supplies, hairspray, and animal gases can make this guy go off as well. So always be um, make sure you know what's going on in the coach, especially if you have animals. But if this guy does go off, you do want to make sure you are taking emergency precautions. And that is the first person out of the door is trying to get is trying to shut off the propane source at the canisters. The second person is trying to get everything out that breathes, animals, fish, people, whoever, out, but you're trying to open some windows. You're not trying to turn on any vent fans or anything like that. Okay, we're not trying to create an electrical spark. Then we're gonna get 50 feet away for about 15 minutes. After that time frame, one person's gonna come back in the coach, and the first place I usually like to tell them to look is gonna be the stove. The reason why is because the knobs are on the outside and they're easy to get hit. Uh, I was going to stay down there because we're going to talk about your winterization, but we're going to come back here for just a second. So these knobs are right here on the outside so they can easily get pressed and churned. Okay. And there is no indicator showing that they're turned on without looking. Uh, if it isn't the stove, you turn the propane back on, it starts making, you know, it starts going off again. The only other place that propane actually comes inside of your coach or it's hooked up inside your coach is the furnace. Okay, your water heater is hooked up outside. All right, so in our pantry area, I do have this panel taken off. <clears throat> and down here is where you're going to winterize your coach. Uh, I did not have your other panel taken off. I apologize for that. But basically right underneath here, you can remove that panel to access the back of the water heater and it's going to have two white valves and I'm going to show you what it looks like on down here but you're going to turn those right now they're in line with the water heater and when you go to winterize you're going to turn those where they're in line with generally what looks like a white hose like this so basically it keeps the antifreeze out of the water heater but basically that valve I'm going to try to see if we can see that here Pull this up so you can kind of see it. It's going to be your valve right here. And that's what it's going to look like on the water heater as well. But basically when you go to winterize, right now it's in line to pull from the fresh water tank. Uh, basically you'll just turn this guy. Got a close up of the elbow there, sorry. Uh, bumping cameras. But basically you're going to turn that valve, put this in your antifreeze, and then use the pump to winterize your coach. While we're down here, we'll go ahead and talk about our fuse panel box. Basically with this guy, everything that runs off 110 is gonna be on your breakers, or your sure power is gonna be on the breakers. And you have to be plugged in to use these guys and it's all labeled right there for you. Everything that runs off the battery is gonna be on the fuses and it's all labeled right here for you as well. The nice thing about these guys is that they get a little indicator light so if that fuse blows, a little red indicator light will pop on and you can usually see it right through this little window. All right. Next, we're gonna have the 12 volt fridge. You got our freezer on, you got a, a temperature adjustment there for the freezer as well. For the fridge, basically down here, you can set it with this button here with the set by change, pushing it and change it. Usually three is the pretty substantial. Uh, usually when we first turn this guy on, I would recommend four or five to get it good and cold and then change it. To turn this guy off, you're gonna press and hold this set button for 10 seconds. And then as you see, it just shuts off. Okay, it is important that you do do that because if you don't, uh, this guy will drain your battery if you didn't turn off the disconnect next we got the microwave with the microwave i usually just like to say make sure you set your timer uh if you guys go out somewhere you come back you see the timer isn't set that shows you there was a power failure at the campsite you want to look and see if that was from the campsite itself or from the electric company um, other than that though the microwave is pretty self-explanatory uh, then we got the hood range you got your light and your fan 
You might gotta make sure that vent outside is open for your fan to be properly working. This is not a glass stove top, which is the labels here for, so you do have to flip this guy up when you go to use it. And then basically you just turn and it'll light. I did turn off our propane, so this guy's only gonna probably run for about roughly eight to 10 seconds and it's gonna shut off on me as you see. And then this guy here is our light, just lights this guy up, but it is also your light for the oven. Your spark igniter also will light the oven as well. You're going to turn this guy to that flame icon, push and hold it in, and then spark ignite. If you hold this guy just right, usually, you can usually see that reflection off of the glass. So you ain't got to try to have your heads way down there. Once it is lit, you keep it pressed and held in for usually 5 to 10 seconds, then set your temperature. Then we got storage up here. You got this sticker here. With this sticker, basically, You'll scan this, it'll take you to a, your Play Store to download an app. You'll put in your camper information and it downloads, I believe it's a PDF file for a manual for the camper itself. You do have a manual packet in here or an owner's bag. It just usually has most of the appliances, uh, owners or manuals and instructions like that in here. The only thing that I would like to try to say, make sure you don't lose is this piece of paper here <clears throat> basically that is your appliance info sheet uh, so if something was to get damaged in the coach they may ask to see if you have the model number and the and the serial number for that appliance nice thing is is that paper right here has all of it for you already and there's some on the back as well Then we got our sink with the hot and cold water. We got the sprayer option as well. And then you got storage down here. And then inside here is your drawers for your silverware, whatever else you may use it for. And then from there, we have basically made our way back to the doorway. Hopefully this video was knowledgeable and informational for you guys. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we'll do our best to answer them for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.